So the project that Mickman was making in Extra City is called Allegory of a Cave Painting. And it's around these uh, uh, painted drawings that are found in the Gion Gion Caves in Western Australia. Northwestern Australia. Northwestern Australia. The painted lines are inhabited by bacteria and fungi that are at times feeding off and consuming each other, making them an eternally living form of art. I chanced upon an article that was presented in 2010 in a journal called Antiquity that told the story of these living pigments of paintings that endlessly paint themselves. So they, they originate in prehistory to the same extent that they originate in a very radical contemporaneity. This created a few trajectories of investigation that um, undergird the Extra City exhibition. One of these very significant in the articulation of that show and in the presentation that you're seeing tonight being contamination. By conventional standards, paintings that are fully inhabited by, by, by fungi and bacteria will be described as infested, as lost. But in the case of the Gion Gion, contamination is essentially productive. It is what sustains, what curates, and what produces, re-engenders, revitalizes, and rejuvenates those, um, those paintings. So this suggested a model of signification and composition where antonyms collaborate. And this is what this exhibition is trying to figure out. Be it a metaphorical anamorphosis of two perspectives in the work of Jacqueline Nesmacher, or a very idiosyncratic way of um, screening a film against the chest of the filmmaker, as is the case in the performance organized by Fabio Mauri. This is a work by Philip Warnell called Outlandish, and results from a conversation between the artist and philosopher Jean-Luc Nancy, a conversation that started from a text that Nancy wrote in the wake of his heart transplant. And Nancy's reflection on the way in which what we think is the interiority of our body is actually a complicated, folded exteriority. Nancy's realization that his own heart was, was diseased was the first moment in which he perceived the presence of the foreign body within what he thought was his own anatomy. And this engenders an absolutely remarkable reflection on, on how interiority actually eludes us. In Tape Echo, a project by Lawrence Abu Hamdan. Lawrence has spent some time in Cairo looking at the city's sonic constitution. What is inspected in the photographs is a series of cassette tapes on which religious sermons are recorded and re-recorded. When a cassette tape is re-recorded, magnetic, the magnetic particles, the crystals of breath uh, that, uh, that make it audible, uh, they are not erased, they are just realigned in order to accommodate the new sound. So in a sense, I guess we can't distinguish between the rhythm according to which those sermons were inscribed onto the tapes and re-inscribed and erased, and uh, the recent political developments through which the city of, um, of uh, Cairo has, um, has gone. The title of the exhibition comes indeed from a poem by the Romanian poet Paul Celan. A breath crystal is a form in which the first symbolic gesture of the human has impregnated the rock and abides as your inscrutable witness. And I think the discipline of archaeology also often commits perjury in relation to this inscrutable witness. It fabricates a past from which modernity descends to the same extent that it restitutes us, the shards and traces and remnants of the past.